Did you have to yeah. skate naked in that movie? You don't have to tell everyone. <laughs> um, at the I time, listen. Uh, how did you know that? Because I, I watched the movie oh, and, you, and okay, I know yeah. Mike's style. And I'm yeah. like, that's not the, Bruce Willis. That's not my butt with and the gun. And I wasn't gun. talking about that's your not ass. not my butt I'm with the gun. Your... No, that's not me. Wait, you had an ass double? <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? How are you? Oh, that was pretty good, right? Yeah, that was. I'm back in it. Yeah, or I'm just I'm just starting anew. That was powerful, and I was trying to be powerful because all I, I feel like I walked into to a gauntlet here. Yeah, you're about to get uh, shit on a little bit. Mike McGill is here. <laughs> Mike everybody. McGill's here. It's done. Yay! Tommy Guerrero, you're next, and then that's it. Then, then we, we move got... into the Bones Brigade B team, where Jason has all his fucking Bones Brigade friends on. Right. What's up, Mike Santa it? Rosa? Right. <laughs> Bring Chris Sin in from Hawaii, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll cater to him. So you were just saying, Mike, that you made some skateboards a long time ago. Uh, you did a graphic? Yeah, actually, no. Lance, uh, he doodled this, my, uh, my skull and snake graphic. He made like a hose and a, on a napkin. And I was yeah. like, oh, that'd be cool to just make. Yeah. He was like, yeah, you should do it, Mike. I'm like, all right. So I made a couple hundred. This is in... I don't know, early '90s or something. A skull? Was it a skull with a hose? Yeah, still a skull with a hose. Still a skull, skull with a gun <laughs> and a hat and a garden. <laughs> okay. So I oh, thought, I, I know just, where this is going. Uh, I have a whole story about it. <laughs> no, here so, we go. Okay. Wait, so wait. It's, uh, I, I got uh, it. Uh, no, right. no. So I, I, he's I, gonna I, return fire. This is gonna be great. <laughs> all right. Yeah. No. Well, I didn't. I never said anything. So I was like, I don't know. I think I was coming to skate with Tony and some of the guys or whatever. I was like, oh man, I'll just drop one off to Tony because I was like. Oh, look at all these boards in this office. Like, yeah, maybe we'll put it up. And then uh, I don't know. A couple of days later, this guy comes in the shop with one. And he's like, "Yeah, check this out." I'm like, "Oh, wow, you got one." And I'm like, "Where'd you get that?" He's like, "Oh, Tony gave it to me." I was like, "Oh, all right." <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Who, wait, I, who is that? I don't know. Hmm, it's okay. That's suspect. <laughs> Do you still have that board, Tony? <laughs> hey, sorry, I got to pause here because. I knew this board sounded familiar, and I've had it the whole time. Right here, with the hose, signed by Mike and Lance, 58 to 58, okay? So whatever story Mike is telling is not accurate. I kept the board, all right? I, I have respect for this. Okay, back to the podcast. I have, I have one that Mike signed for me that you was a, was a reissue. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, but with not the, the hose, not the hose. Not the hose. Not the Lance Mountain. And Which I one would you rather keep? I don't remember the, the hose, hose one though, or the actual Mike McGill one. I, I don't care. I just, I just. You know, I feel like I you know I, a little bit. I just wanted something special. I might have to dig back. I'll try it again, maybe. Maybe we'll see. I thought you were gonna say that there's, there's this sort of history of my collection of skateboards from the '90s, that basically I gave to Quicksilver to put them on display at the hot clothing stores. Oh yeah, and they just had them. And the hot clothing stores closed because hot clothing went to Kohl's and it's gone through a couple of ownerships since then. But um, they, my very first board that I had, and sorry to make this about me, but it's an interesting story. <laughs> the very first board that I had that, that I ever got produced was the, the Hawk graphic with the lightning bolt. You know, my first original board that no one bought. <laughs> and it was wood the, grain. The one with the, the nose? Or? What's that? No. No, 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 like this much nose. Oh, okay. No, like original, 1982. Okay. Um, and it was the only one that I had kept. And someone alerted me like, hey, this board's on eBay and people are questioning the authenticity of it. And I found it and it was, it had fire damage because we had a fire in the laundry room of our house in Fallbrook. So oh. it had smoke damage. So people were questioning the authenticity of it because it was like orange colored, but it was wood grain. And I was like, no, that's my board. Where did they get that? And then I finally chased down the story of Quicksilver threw all my stuff away in a dumpster. Dude, fuck what? off. When Quicksilver w uh, changed ownerships, when they went, the, they went through all their uh, Rosignol stuff and everything got, everything got wonky at Quicksilver. Yeah. All of my stuff, including my trophies. In the truck, in the trash. They threw it in a dumpster and someone saw something poking out of the dumpster and was like, that's an original... 
Hal Peralta, Tony Hawk board. Scorn. So the rest of it went and is pulled gone. a bunch of stuff. Some of it's out there in the wild. Mm. But some of it just went into just the trash. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. I just learned that. I mean, this this happened <laughs> 15 years ago now, maybe. Yeah. Like, no, like 12 years ago, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just learned about all that stuff. So I thought maybe that was that, but no, no, that was. Nah. Well, that that was not very nice of me, Mike. If no, I gave truly no, get to give it away, nice. no, I can only okay. imagine I, don't I gave it to no. someone in need. I just wanted to find something that you would like, but uh, I'll uh, I'll continue on. I will find something. <laughs> what a way to start, <laughs> Jason! Right. Wait, wait! I did no, I did give him something, Jason. Yeah, I don't know where that went. He, I remember on it was uh, the world tour, Bones Brigade tour. He always had the best electronic stuff. Always, I always had like eight track. Oh, stuff. yes. <laughs> He did. Was, I have that. It was uh, a tape player. And he's like- An Iowa. An Iowa, an yeah. A-I-W-A. So we traded for something and I had it all these years and I, I left it in my attic and I found it a couple of years ago, right? Yep. Give back to him. Give back to me. <laughs> Why do you want that? Airwalk sticker on it. It's sick. It's like so a, I- yeah, it's a vintage <laughs> cassette deck from back in the day. Yeah. And um, I used it for- so I did some interview about technology through the year, like the stuff that I loved. Yeah. And that was the first thing I showed. So thank you, Mike. Yeah. High yep. five. Yeah. See, I, I got something. Well, I got a Mike McGill t-shirt for my birthday, for my 50th birthday, and I didn't give it to anybody. I still have it. Nice, Jason. Yeah. Nice. I thought it was pretty cool. I like that. You know, my mom came to America before I was ever in America, and she went to McGill's skate shop, and she got me a sticker. Come on. And I was like, really? Really, mom? You couldn't get me some wheels or a skate, some new bearings, a fucking sticker. <laughs> I was already pretty decent. I had the power to get a sticker. Like I was like, I don't think you. Yeah. Thanks, mom, but fuck, because I was yeah. so pissed to know that she was in there, which meant there was so many uh, in my imagination because I'd never been to America that he had every skateboard you could ever imagine, and my mom picked the sticker. What what year would have that have been? Um. 80? 80, yeah, 85. Was it a McGill but... sticker? Or was it just a random sticker? It wasn't. Uh. Well, we used to have paper stickers. It might have been a Mike McGill <laughs> skate shop sticker, yeah. Because it you wasn't remember, a, a thing. Sean yeah. Mortimer used to run the shop. Yes. When it was on Coast Highway near Panicking. Coast Highway. And we had a bathroom that time, too. So it was... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you don't have a bathroom Listen, in there? Listen, I don't know if you guys know. We started out in uh, like 1988. I opened the store in January after Christmas. It was like the worst time. And the park to was still open. Up. Miguel Park was still open. No, there was no right? park yet. No, no. Oh, no there wasn't. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm, my ears are off. Because, all right. Well, if you want to hear, I don't know if you listeners want to hear how I got to. Yes. When I used to come to California and skate contests at Del Mar and. Where are you from? Brooklyn, Tampa, Florida. Okay. But I was born in New York. Okay. I lived there till I was 10, Brooklyn and Long Island. And then. Uh, when I moved to Florida with everybody's grandparents, <laughs> I started skating. And then I used to have, uh, you know, I would get Skateboarder Magazine and I had pictures of Tony Alva. I had Stacy Peralta on my ceiling. I had Jay Adams. I had um, Steve Olson. I had all these guys. And by the time I turned 13, I met all those guys, all those yeah. dudes. It was just crazy. Because you look at those pictures, I'm sure you did. Oh, yeah. And I lived in this little town in called Newport Ritchie in Florida. There's nothing there, you know? Yeah. And we would skate, you know, we'd skate up to the stores to skate loading docks because uh, the skate park that I found out was like an hour away. So okay. we'd get to go once a week, the maybe. Sensation Basin? No, no. Uh, skate Wave in Tampa. Oh, wow. The airport, yeah. And then, you know, we had a couple parks. And then, yeah, there's a whole group of guys that we looked up to that were, you know, our our legends from from the East Coast, Reggie Barnes, yeah. George McClellan, you know all these guys. Uh, Sorry, Mark Lake, Petty, Sean Petty, Sean Petty, Petty Plant, awesome. Like those guys are. Clyde Clyde Rogers. What's, a, yes. what's a Petty Plant? A you Petty, petty plant, plant is, is um, if you're goofy foot. Yeah, it's, it's like like you're doing a lean to tail, but you grab it's a slob foot plant, slob foot grabbing uh, derriere, and then you throw your foot back on right. Like a Texas plant, but jumping? Y- yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. But but also, like, when I saw the photo, it was hand down. So it was almost like it was laid back. Oh, wait. Plant. And he puts his foot on the coping, right? Yeah. I don't know. We're going to yeah. have to look wait, at what? This. Yeah. So it's- it was like a layback air that you did a foot plant. Oh, doing, okay. 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 Right. And yeah. then 
Yeah. I yes. Mean, yes. Plant, yeah. yeah, you're right. Pity plant. Yeah. Not so, grabbing the tail, though. I don't think. No. No, that one wasn't grabbing it. So then you move to California or you just visit? Well, no. Uh, I guess in the early 80s, like skating, all the parks were closed by me. And uh, I came out to Los Angeles in Venice. Actually, I rented a room from Stacey Peralta's parents for 100 bucks a month. And, Wait, does this uh, mean you're already on PAL? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so you were staying in the house that we used to stay at, like for the Whittier and Upland contest? <laughs> yes, yes. In I didn't Stacey's know you were. Room. They had two, two beds oh, in there. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. I remember one time I convinced you to drive me home. Do you remember that? Kind we were, we were staying at Stacey's parents' house. Yeah. And I was kind of stuck. I was, I was 13 or something. And I was kind of stuck in LA because I had been up there for a contest and I couldn't get a ride. And I was like, Mike. Why don't we let's let's drive to Del Mar? Let's go skate Del Mar. Yeah. And he's like, Yeah? I'm like, yeah, like, you and me. Like, that'd be crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. In your Porsche, yeah. right? Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. That old thing. Yeah. 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 The old, old red thing. One. Wait, yeah. you had a Porsche in the eighties. Nah, yeah. It was an old one, but I I, you know, it, it was, was sick. Yeah. yeah. And so I convinced Mike to drive me home in his Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you didn't Under skate? Under the guise of skating Del Mar. Oh, no, we would skate at Del okay. Mar. And then you cut off. But he was like, mm. yeah, okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, I moved there because I thought, you know, I, I need people to skate with. I was yeah. skating by myself in Florida. But you were really then, good in Florida. Yeah. But it was so what? by You're, Pal. Sponsored by Pal, yeah. There's no. And you had a Porsche. But do you know how I got sponsored, right? Do you have a promo? Right? No. You know, like, I feel oh, you like don't? you're jumping you know into some shit. Yes. It's Tony knows. But. Well, anyway. All right. So I was going back and forth for contests and stuff. There's a guy named Alan Gelfin. Who invented, yeah. Invented the Frontside Ollie. Frontside Ollie. Yeah. Um, he, uh, you know, he would show up at contests or whatever. And he said, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to visit Stacy Peralta over Christmas break. You want to mm -hmm. come? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you got to get, you got to get plane flight and I'll take care of the rest. You know, we're going to stay with my uncle. We're going to. It was four hundred and twenty-one dollars <laughs> <laughs> for a flight back then. Yes, round trip. That seems and like a it, lot. It was a lot for me. It was all I had in my bank account. I think my parents gave me a few bucks for whatever. I was thirteen years old. Yeah. Like who lets their kid go cross country? Dude, all all of our parents did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we spent one night at his uncle's. That was it. We were couch surfing the whole time. We went to Del Mar. We went. We went all over. And uh, Alan's a few years older than me, and. Uh, uh, we went to Stacy's house, met Stacy, stayed at his house one night, you know, and we skated Marina Del Rey. And then uh, I was doing this trick called Layback Air, of course. Kelly Lynn invented it, but nobody's seen Kelly Lynn in Florida. You know, there's no internet, no whatever. So they're like, oh, that's a cool trick. I'm like, no, I didn't make it up. It was Kelly Lynn, you know, uh, but I just inverted it, you know? Yeah. So Stacy's like, hey, this guy, James Casimus from Skateboarder Magazine wants to take a picture of you. You know, maybe you want to skate the I keyhole. The I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. You know, I had a session. And then uh, when we got back to Florida, Stacy said, uh, hey, there's a little picture of you in Skateboarder Magazine. I was like, oh, wow. All right. I'm going to skate up to the drugstore. It's like six miles away. Mm. I looked through the magazine twice. I'm like, man, it must be small. I don't care. My friends are going to freak out. Skateboarder Magazine, you know, like. And then he went one more time. I went to the centerfold, and there I was. I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, that, was, that was Marina. Yeah, Marina yeah. Del Rey. So um, you're on PAL then or after that? No, right. I guess right as that happened. Yeah. And that is not paid. That's amateur? Amateur, yeah. yeah. So you're just right. getting boards, and you get yeah. to stay at Stacy's house. Yep. You got to go back, though, right? Because you live He's in already back. Oh, you mean he got back to California? No, you, he, he was already back in Florida when he saw the picture. Yeah, oh, I, okay. I lived in Florida. Right. Yeah. So, so how then, long until you moved from Florida to California? Oh, not not for many years. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. So then in like, yeah, night, summer of 86, uh, or yeah, let me see, 85, things slowed down with skating and Stacey's like, you got to be here if you're going to, you know, you got to be in the magazines. Yeah. All the magazines are out here. That's you got to be. I'm like, that's where I want to be. <laughs> so I went to LA and uh, rented that room. And then I, everything was closed. Marina Del Rey was closed. I would take an hour and a half drive to Upland once in a while, skate by myself. It was like, this is kind of weird. I was skating by myself in Florida. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then Lance would be home once in a while. I'd skate his ramp. I'm like, this sucks. You know, I'd go down to Venice Beach, Christian to be skating, you know, 
little walls and stuff. It's like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. So I would skate down. I Sorry, I would drive down. I kept driving back and forth to San Diego to skate with Tony and Kevin and just skate Del Mar because that was the only place to go, you know. And uh, finally, I think uh, Tony and Kevin are like, why don't you just live down here? Why you oh, mate, I don't know about you, but th I think this summer is for relaxing, not grocery shopping, cooking, for, and washing tons of dishes and all that factor. Ready to eat meal delivery. The rest is easy knowing you can eat well without the work. Plus, they have tons of balanced and delicious options like smoothie shakes. And, and shakes that are perfect for staying on track during the summer activities. I've eaten them. They're very tasty. Factor makes it easy uh, to eat a good breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything in between with fresh, never frozen meals that are so delicious, you won't even believe they're actually nutritious. That's not true. I believed it. So feel good all summer with uh, calorie smart keto options, e expertly portioned to keep you on track toward your goals and perfectly satisfied factor now offers 32 meals per week including 11 keto options plus lots of seasonal add-ons no more eating the same boring dinner night after night new gourmet plus meals make it easy uh at home feel uh to feel extra special for additional costs these meals are prepared to perfection by factor chefs and they're ready to eat in record time, so you can savor the flavor. No stress in the prep, mate. Got a busy summer ahead. Get these meals up, ya. Yeah. This is a great way to stay in shape and take care of yourselves, everybody. And 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 by being a little, I don't want to say lazy, but it gives you time to do other stuff, like work out. Maybe you've got soft pecs and you want to jack them. Uh, listen up, everybody. Go to go.factor75.com slash wolf 120 use the code wolf 120 and get 120 buckaroonies off your order that's code wolf 120 at go.factor75.com slash wolf 120 for 120 dollars off live up there yeah i was i was taking some some acting classes up there and just stuff to open me up because i was a shy kid and Stacy was like, you should just go to Burbank and take these classes. It'll open you up. And it did. It opened me up a bit. And um, and then, yeah, after living there for a year, I just, uh, I think uh, uh, Tony's brother, Steve, was was uh, helping Kevin's grandmother. Grandma, out. Yeah. And like, all you have to do is just get the groceries once a week. And, oh, you know, yeah. Take the so main I mean, home. One <laughs> backstory to that. Kevin's, Kevin's grandmother, Kevin, lived in, Kevin Staub, his grandmother lived in Rancho Santa Fe. Um, she came from a pretty well-to-do background. Yeah. And so my brother through Kevin, uh, she offered him to stay in the what, what maid's quarters. Quarters. to the maid's quarters. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, she's doing real well. Yeah. And maid's so quarters. My dad, my my dad, my brother lived in the maid's quarters because he worked at the newspaper, the local newspaper. And so he would just do odd jobs for her, drive her around. She didn't, she couldn't drive anymore. How so, old was she around this time? She was probably mm. in her 70s, late 70s. Late 70s yeah. 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 And so all he had to do was, was make sure that she got to her appointments or whatever it was and just do random stuff. Not, not like she had a maid that would okay. come. You know, it didn't Rennie. live in the, What's Rennie. that? Rennie. <laughs> Rennie, yeah. So oh, she wow. had a maid. But, but you had to, oh, you had to drive the maid back and forth. That was yeah, the other thing. A couple thing. times a week. Go to the grocery store. She called in her order. You pick up the groceries. Food and rent free. Yeah. Free. So my brother was doing that. And then my brother moved on. And he recommended and it he, to Mike? Yeah. Yes. Hey, I man, I know the sweet spot. Because that is I a sweet in. spot. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. And they had, they had a guest house. We used to stay there for Del Mar contests because we were young. And like it felt like we were living on our own. Yeah. So yeah. Kevin, Joe Johnson, and I would all stay in the guest house oh, of Kevin's sick. grandma's house for Del Mar events. It was pretty sick. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, that was awesome. I, I don't know what else to say. Oh, well, no. So uh, Virginia was her name. Super nice lady. I was stoked. And then I would just be waiting for Kevin to come over, you know, because he lived in Arizona at the time. 
and then we'd all get together. And then I was the only one that could drive because I'm a few years older than these guys. And I would drive that old Mustang, remember? Oh, yeah. And we'd listen to- Who's uh, Mustang? It was Kevin's grandmother. She had three of them. And Kevin Sick. has one right now. I think he's painted purple, by the way. So Makes sense. Yeah. And- uh, Oh, and he's got a duster, right? Or a, I don't know, he's got some. I don't know. Car talk with Tony Hawk. I please, know, please I, indulge but me. You know, no. you know what's crazy? Do you remember we used to listen to that one song? I don't know why it stuck in my head. F I R E I N C I R. Fire in Cairo. You yeah. guys were singing at the top of their lungs while I was yeah, driving. Sense. I was like, yeah. settle down. I, I got to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> the adult in the room. It does seem like that you were the adult of all these people, but oh you weren't. God. That much older, no. like it kind of oh, seemed for like. Sure. Yeah, the same with no. Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson was when Mike moved on from there. Joe was the only one old enough to drive, so we relied on Joe to drive the Mustang. <laughs> 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 but you know what's funny though, because Stacy always appointed me. You got to take you, drive him here. You got to you when we would go on tour somewhere, and I was the one. Yeah. And I'd have to sometimes put my credit card down and get paid back by Stacy and George. But he and, always did, right? Oh yeah, of course. But then they were like, "Oh, we're just gonna give everybody credit cards." He knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's and told like, that story. I was excited because I was like, "I don't have to get paid back by Stacy anymore." Yeah, and of course, you and know what he happened. it for everyone. Oh, you wrecked, yeah, totally. <laughs> Wait, <what>? Tommy <laughs> bought like guitars. Stevie uh, bought all kinds of amps, and I don't know. He bought computers and. You, did you fuck up and spend a bunch on Hell it? Hell no! Because he already I, I, had a credit card. Right? You, you, you we knew didn't they know worked? how credit cards worked. But he already knew. <laughs> you guys were like free money, and you were yeah. like, mm, "That's not what it is." Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. And it all came out of our paychecks. Yeah. Right. It wasn't like they were actually trying to have us do legitimate expenses with them. Right. They. Would I mean, that was what they thought. It was like, oh, if you guys are on tour, then you need food, then you use this, and we didn't. And it's like, yeah, I'll buy everything. Right. And then they, they just took it out of our paychecks. They, they gave Jesse Martinez a credit card. Dude, that guy went wild. I remember going to Venice uh, with he uh, is, eating his soy. He's like, come on, let's go to breakfast. Let's go to lunch. I'm like, what? Pal credit card, pal credit card. Yeah. That lasted for about a month. Yeah. Yeah. Man, he's still in Venice. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. But he, he uh, when I first went on tour with him, and I think it was, Lance and somebody else when we did the jump ramp thing and whatever. And of course, McGill has to take care of everyone again, <laughs> you know? And you were uh, the den father for those, yeah. Those, those legs. And I remember, like, I'm like, yo, Jess, we got to get up, man. You got to get up. We got to go. We got to, we're going to be late. And uh, he takes me aside and he's like, yo, McGill, uh, <laughs> listen, you can't talk to me like that. <laughs> I'm like, how am I supposed to talk to you? I said, I said, you know what, Jess? I said, <coughs> I said, I give up. You, you take, you take over, because I, I can't do this anymore, man. You just, you know, you, you get the guys together. Just, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't mean that. No. <laughs> just, you know, like, you know, I'm like, all right, Jess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what, what did that establish? Uh, nothing, absolutely nothing. But, uh, that we're on Jesse's time. Jesse time. Yeah. So yeah. when did you? When they got older and got licenses, yeah, was, did it feel even at any point? Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> you always well, but, felt but like also, you were the on, on the pal tours. We've talked about this before, but on the pal tours, there was always someone designated in charge of yeah. that crew because you were only on tour. Well, only you were on tour for about four weeks at a time. Yeah, the tour was months long. Yeah. What would you call those guys? They're called like chaperones, right? Yeah. So yeah, pretty much. So our quality of chaperones, That's, besides Jim Fitzpatrick, he was he was he was great. We had this guy was, named Todd Hastings, Todd yeah, Hastings which we it. called Hastings. Oh, okay. Because Just to be an asshole, or well, no, because he was always smoking, uh, and he's supposed to be watching us in Amsterdam and all these countries. And, and all. what's wrong with smoking hash and watching you guys? Nothing except for <laughs> when he goes to you and he goes, McGill. Uh, we we switched through. Uh, you know, we drove that van around everywhere, going through countries or whatever. He's like, McGill, give me your board. He starts taking my board apart. And I was like, what? Is we had, put we had like cell blocks. Plates? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the cell block, he's got sketchy. a hash block. Dude, those in there. guys. So sketchy. I was like, dude, you're supposed to be a chaperone. <laughs> I'm going to get arrested. I had a teammate on, on the Bones Brigade who uh -huh. couldn't speak English. He was from Spain, Javier. And, and he couldn't speak English. And he's a total street guy. And I'm the vert dude. I'm older. I'm the drunk. <laughs> like I'm definitely nobody put me in charge of shit. They knew from the start. Doesn't matter how old Jason is, just yeah. to let him do stuff. But when we met, 
he gets off the plane and he's like, hey, you, you smoke? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, with no English. And I'm like, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. And he's like, oh, good. And then he rolled a joint under the table because there were other people there with one hand and just came up Who with was it. that? Javier Sermento. Huh. I, I still follow him on Instagram. He's, I think he's <laughs> pro. Like he's legit okay. as fuck now. But he was like a little amateur guy right, right, right. on PAL. Yep. And every when they found out that he was, because I was like, where you get, where you've been here for twenty minutes? Where'd you yeah. get the hash? He's like, oh, I don't know. and then shows me the the base plate. I'm like, dude, that's even me. I was like, that's really dangerous. Do you know that? Like, because it's not even weed; it's hash, which is a narcotic. I knew that from yeah, yeah. having sketchy friends. But it wasn't in your base plate, right? No, like, no, that would dude, that would have been. I would have punched him in the face if he did it. To me. I'm like, dude, that's my whole visa gone. Like, no. Yeah, why wasn't Todd bringing his own skateboard for smuggling? He was going to make Mike McGill take the rap. <laughs> I have, a, I have a take the rap. Similar story to that, which was, you know, guilty by association. But um, one time when Christian was, when Christian was, was starting to sort of unravel in his usage and, mm. and, and everything, which he's documented. It's not like yep, I'm yep. bringing something mm. crazy up. Uh, we went to Japan and uh, we were going, through, we arrived and we were going to go through, you know, the guys like, okay, come. And then uh, I was with my girlfriend at the time who had never met Christian, who didn't know much of anything, hadn't been to Japan before. And the guy's like, together? And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 not together. No. And then <laughs> she just was like, what? And then walked up through behind Christian. So now we're together. And Christian's just got, he's got his fanny pack. He's got st like just stuff coming out of his pockets. Keychains. Uh. And the guy's like, What's that? And he's like, what, bro? What? And he's like, in your pocket. He's like, what? And he like sl slides up his hand. And there's just all these papers and receipts and stuff coming out. And he's such a disaster that the guy's like, just go, just go. And I was like, okay, we're going. And then we get into <laughs> this little shuttle that we're going to go to the hotel. And he's like, oh, glad he didn't see this. And he's got a block of hat that he has covered oh, with his receipts. hand. With receipts, yeah. Mm. And then I watched my girlfriend at the time washed her face like what i'm like yeah that's yeah recognize yeah it, <laughs> get the fuck like, out of there <laughs> you'll disappear <laughs> don't you, know, you have a time. didn't oh he well that was the trip where he ended up where he didn't sleep kind of, right yeah he didn't sleep but mm. um anyway I, i'm not trying to throw christian under the bus it was just a crazy where i was yeah. like wait we're not together oh we're not ever together hey, it'd be different if he was a mess right now but yeah, yeah, he yeah, fucking yeah. turned yeah. it around and became a shining star oh, yeah. excellent father ex like just that's true fucking but amazing you know what now. have you ever uh, tried to get ready with Christian and Caballero in, the game? <laughs> <laughs> in their that, prime it's did, ridiculous first of all Caballero Christian takes a long time, time is a whole different level than is, Jesse Martinez time yes yeah. yes he yeah. is yeah but I've, I've been at, uh, at he made Caballero. people wait in contest sorry Mike but he made people yeah. wait when they called out his name Oh, he I made remember. Us all wait, not one time. If you ask that story, skateboarding <laughs> oh, will go through. I was one time he did it to me. One time he did it to me. Everyone has one where they're like, "Are you really gonna wait fifteen full minutes to take your right?" To yeah. Well, you gotta yeah. make sure you get like, that. Well, I can't do that. Well, I, Tony Price remember. It. Well, you gotta make sure the right Madonna song was on too. Yeah, yeah. He'll yeah, tell yeah. him which, if it's which wrong. He'll, he'll, he'll wait cool. and wait. You gotta get the right song. I'm not going yeah. anywhere. We'll play up dance I mean, when you think about it, the track. Just play this one through. <laughs> when and you wait for the next one, when you think about it, it did make the mm. whole contest better. Like it yes, was a no, like someone's going to do something rad. Someone's going to fall, and yeah. Christian's going to like delay the contest for fifteen <laughs> minutes because the song's not right. I'm like, this shit is awesome. Nobody, okay. I never saw okay. anyone get angry at him for doing that. It was more like, are you really? You uh, are going to do that. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you, I was in a hotel room. We were skating Bondi, one of those events, whatever. In so, Australia. Yeah, and I got roomed with Christian and Cab, and it was like a, what like year a two, is this? This is only like about maybe eight years ago. Oh, wow. so I was gonna say if it was Bondi, they were, it was, yeah, it was we were all supposed to go, you know, to dinner at meet everyone at that crazy house thing or whatever. And so I'm already ready. I'm like, oh, dude, I'll just I just waited on the couch, and both of those guys are getting ready. I don't know what they're doing for. It seemed like hours. Outfits, dude. They're changing no, outf outfits and, then I'm, and I'm, like, nope, that doesn't match. Jason, I smelled smoke. I'm oh. Like, Oh, okay. What's going on? And I open my eyes. The room is on fire. Well, the towel is on fire. Christian decided to put his towel over the light. Yeah. Oh, no. 
<laughs> and yeah, I had to go put the fire out. And uh, you did because what they couldn't, they didn't even know they're still in the bathroom. <laughs> you really are like I'm a you. parental <laughs> guider of fucking idiots. No, like, uh, it's no. so crazy how many times you got put. <laughs> like, they're like, Whoa, man, thanks, Mike, for putting the fire out. Like, <laughs> like what the f- uh, cab wasn't smoking weed though, right? Uh, then no, no, not then, but they did. No, in, it was smoking, uh, the fire was caused by the. By the no, the towel, the on, towel the light. on the lamp. Wait, he was drying his towel. On he put the, the light towel the on the lamp and it caught fire. <laughs> there was no one smoking weed. <laughs> oh, Jason, <laughs> here's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume if there's a fire, Christian no, smoked no, out no, the room. He was, okay, he was long clean by then. Long clean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to uh, you. Move out here, and I want to yeah. know the story of how McGill's store started. Yeah. Oh, you do. Yes. Oh. Well, my mom, I helped her make a nursery in Florida. We had like plants and stuff. And all these kids were coming in like, Mrs. McGill, how come we can't get any skateboards around here? You know, like you should open a skate shop. So she, she opened a skate, the first skate shop in Florida while I was living out here. Wait, she did? She did. Without you? Without me. <laughs> Check out the skate shop I got. It's yeah. Not, is it called McGill's back then? Mc, of course. Makes Mike sense. McGill's skate shop. She, I think <laughs> oh, at one wait. time she was signing my name. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> wait, you didn't know and you got back home and you had a Mike McGill skate he shop knew. that your mom made? No, I knew. She told okay. me. And I was like, Mom, that's cool. You know? She, yeah. She got, you know, on, on a little part of the thing. And then the whole nursery turned into a skate shop. How did she get all the skateboards in? I still you? wonder. I still wonder. So I, she I, made the calls. Yeah, she called George and, oh, okay, we'll get, get you some skateboards over there. Yeah, whatever. I'm sure Mike's mom has some pull. It's still pull impressive to get, yeah, to... to get accounts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, so I, that was for about a year and a half or so. And then I was like, I was excited to see my signature skateboard in a, in a store. So I went into the local surf shop and I was like, dude, where's the, where's the skate section? They're like, in the back, in the back. So I went underneath the t-shirt rack and. Stack no of boards, way. and I was like, "Oh, that's it, man! This is this town needs a skateboard shop." <laughs> and at the time, it was only uh, Carlsbad Pipelines, but you know, yeah, so it was, I remember that it was in another town. And uh, so my mom's like, "You should just open a store there." I'm like, "How am I gonna do that, mom? I'm like skating, I'm traveling, whatever. You, you could do it." I'm like, all right. So I remember I had a, uh, I was Mike McGill, but it didn't matter. Oh, George was the only one that would give me credit. And I'd I'd go to like Vision or whatever. I'd pay them like a cashier's check, and I would oh fill my, my car God. with shoes and whatever. Two hundred square feet, no bathroom. I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just all right, let's just have a skate shop. Yeah. And I think, uh, and then Sean Mortimer worked for us for a while, and uh, Dave Swift. I have all these guys. Do you have a business to, degree or anything? Like, are you a business no. savvy guy? Uh, went to the, the same college as Tony, uh, University of Skate, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you left early. But you had obviously some, skating. you must have yeah. some drive to have McGill Skate Shop last all these generations of, yeah, it's hot and then it's not, but you stay. It was, but I, so the reason I was talking about Sean is that Sean was working there and it was super slow. It was, this is probably Very 91-ish. Slow. Yeah. That's when we all stopped making a, a paycheck. And I, yeah. I was like, oh, move over. Sean. I got to, I got to work my store. I got to, I got to. Yeah. I, gotta, but I wasn't used to call Sean every day because he'd just be there and they're bored. <laughs> And in a different voice, ask if they sold rollerblades. Oh, nice. Every I single day. That. Yes. <laughs> and so much fun. He always fell for it. And he'd always, because rollerblades were coming up. Uh, yeah. And he'd always be like, no, click. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that guy. Always the Poor same Sean. no, but we, we mm. thought it was hilarious. Yeah, me yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it wasn't easy, Jason, but I had to learn yeah. the hard way. And uh, I remember in, the, like mid nineties, like we were a core skate shop. Yeah. And, but we weren't making that much money and we had to carry like longboards. I remember getting longboards. Sector from nine. Shit. Michael from gravity and then sector nines. And, and like the hardcore guys were coming in they're like, Mike, man, you yeah. know, like why are you carrying this stuff? Like to pay the bills. I'm like, dude, dude, I'm sorry, but if we don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. like we're, we're going under just right. so you know, we, we gotta, we gotta, if you want grip tape, up. you better get used to that <laughs> sector nine on the wall over there. That's right. That's right. So they, they went along with it. And then of course, you know, like when I opened the store, Del Mar was still open for a year. And then all of a sudden it, it closed. And then we, we had to, you know, find ramps to skate. We skated while well, Tony made his 
place out in uh, Bonzel. We skated that Fallbrook ramp in the middle of the avocado yeah, grove. Tobin. 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 Tramp, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, it was awesome, but uh, you know, like I could go skate local ramps because I was Mike McGill, but my customers come in, Mike, they won't let us skate. They think we're going to, you know, sue them, you know, the whole whatever. Is this what triggered your skate park? Absolutely. So I worked with the YMCA for a while. I raised you know, about $9,000 for them, got prizes or whatever. They did nothing. I went to the city. They love me, but they're like, Mike, we can't do anything. It's our hands are tied. So then I was talking to a cop that was local by us. And he's like, Mike, we have a, a, a surfing association. We do something with the Boy Scouts and we use their insurance. We give them the membership and you'll get like $5 million worth of liability. I'm like, really? So cool. I rented a lot for a thousand bucks a month. I flew Tim Payne out from Florida to build just a very well, hold on, hold on. Wait, That's the right. skate park was a thousand dollars a month? Yes. But when you say a lot, what you what you didn't say is huh. that it was the site of the original Carlsbad skate park, one of the first skate parks ever built, yes. that the concrete was still there. That concrete that's around it. Yes. That, yeah. I was like, I always so, wondered. I was like, it looks yeah. like that was skatable at one point. So we, it was. Yeah. It, so it was. It was. It was the first skate park in California. Uh -huh. Um, one of the first skate parks ever. Right. And I never got to skate it. It closed before I really got into skating. Oh shit! But it was always there. So we would drive there and try. Oh, they to didn't skate doze it. it. It was still. Yeah, it was. You still could see there. little pieces of cement. No, no, but up. but but in it when we skated Del Mar. The whole park was still there. Oh, really? Yeah. So we used to drive there and try to skate it. And there was a dude that lived in a trailer with a rock salt gun. Yes. And he would shoot threaten you. us <laughs> with a rock salt gun. Did he shoot people? Yes. With it? Yeah. And my dad tried to sweet talk him into it. Like my dad, I was, because one day we're just like, we want to skate the Cosmo Park. We'll just drive up there, see what's, see what's doing, you know? Adult, and, a man to man. Yeah. And so we're going. And then uh, he comes out, you ain't skating there. <laughs> And my dad, dad said, hey, my hey, dad's hey. like, and it's like, hey, come on, we're not hurting anything. Like he's like, uh-uh, nope. And then he like that's when he cocked it. And then my dad was like, Yeah, we better go. <laughs> what a well, fucking maniac. He yeah. cocked it at a at a dad, like, dude, calm down. But you remember what they did. So there's like so a, then, a whole banked area. Right. Yeah. And they took yeah. they they were tired of people coming. So they took a jackhammer and went all around over the jackhammer. Oh, okay. And then some other guys came and in and they made a fish. Turned it into catfish, catfish farm. Ponds. Heads and skins removed if you request it upon request or something. <laughs> yeah, and so there, so it was a catfish farm. You would go and catch hmm. catfish in yeah. the bowls that used to be the Carlsbad skate park <sighs> snake run, and then. But Mike, when he opened the <laughs> skate park on that land, which had already been filled in, so all, it was all filled dirt, whatever. All the signs were still there from the catfish. <laughs> you take them down. No, <laughs> it's kind of a good look. Never forget, I'll never forget there, around the vert ramp. It says no running. Don't throw fish back. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a shit ton of sense. When yeah, you're on the vert ramp. yeah. So anyway, we just gra gathered the locals. I mean, we, I flew Tim over to make the vert ramp. And I'm like, dude, I don't wasn't some of the chin ramp used. We tried, but it was just so hard to get okay. any of That's the folklore. And then, uh, uh, Wit wanted me to pay him all this money for the store. And I'm like, dude, we don't even have any money. Come on. Money. So I'm like, all right, you keep it, Wit. Um, and then I just had the locals. I'm like, dude, if you want to skate for free, you got to come help me build these ramps. So we had, you know, a couple dozen people help build the ramps and whatever. It was a skate club. Yeah. And I would go after working at the shop. I'd go at, after school. Everybody would get out at uh, three o'clock and we'd skate from three to seven or whatever. And When you opened it, did it have everything that I saw? Like, did you have straight from the get, get go? You had a vert ramp and all those mini ramps with the hips and stuff. That was uh, we added the hips at the last six months because then... the hip was like a new thing in skateboarding. Yeah, I just wondered because you do Alfonso rolls and Danny he, Way. They kind of made race, themselves you know. on your facility. Oh yeah, mm. like Elf has video parts from back then where I still go. If a dude did that now, he'd be fucking good. Like Elf was doing stuff where I'm like, what, yeah. dude? How do you no, do No, it that? was great. And you know what? It, it, if anything, I did it for as long as I could do it for like three years. And then finally the YMCA took note of it. And they're like, hey, Mike, can you come work for us and do this? I'm like, no, I, don't, I can't work for you. But this is how you do it. You know, make sure you get, you know, good ramps. And and uh, and they did it, which was awesome. Um and then, uh, you know, the city of Escondido called me. Hey, can you come, you know, help us with whatever? I told them what you need to do. And, you know, and uh, because now they could get insurance through, you know. How long was your skate park open for? About three years. That's it. 
That's it. Mm-hmm. It just seemed like such a, but I have a story. I went there yeah. and we didn't have a cow or know anybody. So my dad was there. Yeah. I have a story okay. about your dad. All right. <laughs> I learned Tower Grab 540s on your vert ramp mm. and your dad came over and he goes, you know who invented that, right? And I'm like, because <laughs> I'm a shithead. I'm like, this is a Tail Grab 540. So it's different than what your son did. <laughs> like trying oh, to be man. snobby about him, trying to correct me about it. But I was like, just to have your dad at the skate park. I am, I always, I know you all want to sound a little stressful because your dad was like running contests and I know how skateboarders are, but. As a person that didn't have that, it always looks really cool. Like that your dad was like, my son, you're skating. And I'm like, what's that like? <laughs> to have a <laughs> dad know- who's like all proud of your, <laughs> of your shredding. But you know, he lived in Florida. So when we were traveling, I was, I was doing all this. I was single. So uh, when we were on tours and whatever, like I, how, who's going to run the skate park? I got to keep it open for my yeah. customers. And you know, yeah. So my dad would run it from like Tuesday through Sunday. He did a great you know? job. He loved it. He'd come out two or three weeks at a time. Loved it. Here's my other story for yeah. Mike. I got a couple that were a lot. Yeah. I'll leave out the bad ones. <laughs> I'll need the good ones. This other guy that came to Australia, came to America with me. So this is my second time in America. I'd been here originally for six months. Once I met Lance Mountain, a few people. I knew some people. Hmm. Now I'm coming back and I'm bringing this other guy who's never been to America before. I think it was the train station in Oceanside or something like that, where we got off in Carlsbad, somewhere like that, and we yeah. walked up Palomar to the skate park. Yeah. That's a long way, dude. That's like We had miles, backpacks with uh, sleeping bags in it. Like, we were, we were homeless. Mm. We were like, there's a huge chance that we will not have a couch to sleep on. We slept in a kid's playground a couple of times. But we're walking up to your skate park, and as you said, it's very, very far. Yeah. And it's really hot. <laughs> and my passion was like, you know, do, 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 do. and I look back, and he's like a, He's like half a mile behind me. And I'm like, what are you fucking doing? He's like, I can't do this anymore. Where's this fucking skate park? We've been walking all day. And I'm like, that's the difference right there. That's the fucking difference. I'm going to walk. I'll walk until my feet come off because I'm going to fucking make it. And mm. this is what you need to make uh. it. And then he like kind of bowed out of trying to be a pro skateboarder because of that walk. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also There's remember- yeah. Being sponsored by Planet Earth, and I had to wear a Planet Earth t shirt every time I went oh, to yeah. McGill's because I couldn't read or write at all. So I purposely would wear my Planet Earth t shirt, and when people weren't looking, because you had you could get in you for free write, write your if you wrote your sponsor. Oh, right, right. So right, I'd always yeah. be like, Yeah. P. And I knew. Don't ever show up with that Planet Earth on your T-shirt, or you won't get in. <laughs> and I didn't want anyone to be like, "What the fuck did you just rock?" Yeah, <laughs> but that skate park. I yeah, learned a good. lot of shit on that skate park, man. Like that was. Yeah, I thought were, it was there for way longer for some weird reason. Yeah, no, just a little over three years. And there's guys that like that came up past us that were just so good, like Sean Andrews and Mike Yusufer and all oh, those yeah. guys. Yeah. Like they were just, they were just, they loved it, you know. Um, and I always felt bad. At least they got to travel a bit, you know, uh, through skateboarding. Yeah. Um, but you you did uh, what we, we affectionately called it the double fist burl twirl. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But <laughs> 720s on that ramp, this guy grabbing both hands. It, it, oh, it, yeah. By accident. So Jason, by sick. Accident. I, I, I love it. But it was you the only way I could bring first. it around. Yeah. I, it was I amazing. Know. <laughs> that's we got to remember gotta, that too. Cause I look, cause, because it, the only 720 done uh-huh. at that point was, you know, was the Weddle grab. Yeah. Um, and then he started trying it and he grabs Indy cause he catches it easier. And then to, to keep both feet on, just grabs with the other hand. Holy shit. Wait, so you did double grab 720? Yes. I guess. Double fisted yeah. Burl Troy. I love it. Tony I, says. I'm, not, I'm not saying to make fun of it. I love it. Like, I think it's amazing. I don't give a shit if you got yeah. half your hand up your ass. If you do a 720, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> 720s yeah. are f- oh man. Give a shit how you accomplish it. Just make yeah. it. It's awesome. Yeah. So did you, because you are the inventor of the McTwist and then people copy you and then he does the seven because yeah. you're the guy that's like, no more 360s. We're doing fives. Check it out. Everybody jumps on your bandwagon. Right. Tony's like, oh, Oh, we're we're spinning more than five, we're spinning five forties. I'll do that five forty, and then I'll see you with a seven twenty. And you were like, right. "Oh yeah, 
<laughs> watch this double boot fucking spin <laughs> till you win 720. Oh, man. Like, but, were you trying yeah. to compete with him when you did that? I, you know what? I think we all just competed uh, just to get, you know, just, yeah. I mean, it's progression, right? You know, you, you, you just want to keep, keep going. All right, but take us, take us to 1984. Uh, 1984. Okay, when the twist was done. I mean, you guys. I'm sorry that, that we have yeah. to do this to you because yeah. I'm sure everybody asks you this shit. Yeah. But you told me a short version on the Vert Ramp the other day. About. And I thought it was because I brought up the question. Did you not make one on a vert ramp? And then the first contest was at Del Mar where you had to do it in a bowl. In a pool. And from what I've heard, yeah. and not a very yeah, good. Yeah, straight, straight from the giant ramp in Sweden to Del Mar. That's why I was almost hanging up every time I remember. <laughs> but you were but making when, it. Well, how, I'm, 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 and it's well documented, obviously, but I, I'm trying to figure out how the very first attempt went. Yeah. Uh, well, here's the thing. You know, uh, we... Let's see, it was me, Lance, and Rodney. Uh, we were skating at the camp that Tony went to the next year. Next year. And uh, that big giant ramp that had no vert on it, but it was actually elliptical. Oh, God, I hate that. And this shit. Uh, it just worked out for some reason. Yeah. You know? Well, it was um, so much bigger that you didn't really notice. Yeah, you could do a back, you could do a rock and roll, you could do a four or five backside air, right? Yeah. I mean, you could just yeah. Oh, okay. So it was easy to get speed. Yeah, but at first it'd be like, why is this so big? Like, why does it feel like just this? Just drawn out. You're waiting for the coping. And yeah, it just felt you're like felt I, so I feel different. like I should be doing something with my hands. You know, waiting to <laughs> yeah. go. Up. So you made the adjustment, and then you what? What triggers it? Did some? Is it because of the well, front side five forty? Like, what made you? Because I know that Billy Ruff, right? Yeah, he did the first front side five forty. So that's the he first. He did it with his hand down. Okay, yep. but it's still a five. You're yeah, spinning yeah, yeah, the five yeah. forty. So yeah, but I think that was like right. Yeah, it was probably around maybe similar time. I don't know. But uh, the only guy I saw actually do a 540 was Fred Blood, the roller skater, who was the only guy that we kind of gave respect to b besides Duke Rennie and a few of the guys that actually- you posted would, him the other day. Would yeah. skate. I saw that. And he did it. Oasis, 1980. He did what became a McChwist. So he he is the inspiration for uh, you going, wait a minute. I would have to say, it. yeah. I was in uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey with- um, Jamie Godfrey and Stacy, sorry, Stacy Peralta asked me, where do you want to go for Christmas? Because when we did good in contests, when I lived in Florida, it's like, we'll send you somewhere. Where do you want to go? I'm like, wait, I want to go skate with Jamie. I want to go to Cherry, back to Cherry Hill. He's like, what okay. do you mean send you somewhere? Like, could have you gone to Hawaii and just relaxed on the beach? Or is it like, where do you want to go? I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that, but I'm just saying, do you, you, you want to come out here to California? Or where, you know, do you want to? Did you all get that? No. <laughs> well, he lived in California. He got to skate all the parks. I lived in Florida with a, my little tiny ramp, you know. At the, at and the I time. came in later too. I mean, Cherry Hill was gone by the time I started skating. Okay. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you must be young. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't gone. It was uh -huh. in the magazine. But by the time I got on Powell, Cherry Hill was a memory. Okay. But now Cherry Hill, if you know, is uh, it was like one of the smoothest parks ever built. Like the cement was like. As you would say, a baby's ass. Yes, yes, we right? do. Yeah, um, and guys like uh, Jamie Godfrey and Mouse. Uh, Mike Jesselowski, Mouse. Those guys, it's like they skated so smooth, almost too smooth. I mean, Jamie Godfrey would come up and do a you know five six foot backside air. You're like, yeah, six foot backside air. But he was so smooth and fluid, you know, uh, but because of the terrain, you know. And they had this a three quarter after pipe. Dave, Dave Andrack, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now there's a few people out there that do head high airs. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Around yeah. the same time. Right. He's a rare yeah. guy, around right? Around the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Jamie Garvey, was, he was Bones Brigade. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I wanted to go there because I wanted to skate it again. It, it, was, it seemed amazing. Yeah. And Fred Blood happened to be there. It was Christmas vacation. Yeah. And uh, he was in the, the big egg bowl and he was spinning around, you know. But he would actually... You know, Tony's seen him a lot. He would actually try and grab. So it actually looked like he was skateboarding. Yeah. I was like, that's cool. You know, give the guy some respect. And I was like, man, it's so unfair. Like, he could do that. What if we could just do that, you know, on our skateboard and grab somehow? But whatever. Everybody just thought about it, maybe. I don't know. And it was probably, let's see, that would have been, yeah, several years before, maybe four years before or something. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I had thought about it and I just knew that it's not going to work. You know, I was just messing around, messing around on the on the ramp after skating it for three weeks. Come on, you, you know, you, you, we did every trick we could possibly do, and yeah. then some. 
And I just, I taped up my wrist guards. You probably heard the story already. I put I d- I Barry's hip pads in. I looked, I looked like Kevin Staub. I was- Okay, so you got slammed. In Sweden. In Sweden. Okay. And everybody had gone to dinner. And you can skate till like three in the morning. It's still light. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to skate. And there was two kids there. I don't know. One, one kid was Bod Boyle. Who was one of our? Yeah, yeah, was one of our. Hugh Bud uh, Boyle just yeah. so happened to witness that. that we Man, trained. I want to hear Bud Boyle's version of this yeah. story. Yeah, and uh, some other kid, and uh, we didn't have cameras or anything. And I was, like, I'm just going to try this, you know. And I just thought if I could, if I could just do back, you know, a mute air, well, a Weddell air. Chris uh, contacted me, by the way, like years later when Facebook came in, and whatever. He's like, Mike, I'm so stoked you, you did the twist, grabbing my way, you know. I, I was like. Wow, That's, you know uh, that is cool. And because uh, we used to skate with him at Colton, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, I if I could just make that that one spin, I just didn't want to land on my head. Yeah. I didn't want to. I, I just you know. But, so the first one you tried was above coping. Above coping, yeah. And wow. Out. And How I just high? Uh, maybe like three or four feet. Okay, so I'm fucking going. It was for it. yeah because it, I had to make that spin. I, I you, made it to here and I and I and I knee slid down. Did you invert on the first one or no, was it a side spin? No, all flat spin. Flat spin. Okay, for you know for the whole time we were there, and then probably about thirty. It took me about it was like thirty five, forty five minutes. I probably did a couple dozen, and um, those kids were watching me, and Bob Boyle was watching me, and they didn't know what I was doing. They just thought, oh, he's doing like a. Uh, all you backside air because it wasn't somersaulting then it was just spinning it was just spinning spinning and bailing spinning and bailing oh, okay so i never came around and then all of a sudden i came around and i landed and wait uh, you made it i made it in what do you mean minutes. all of a sudden like you're saying that you've got no chance of making it you're spinning go man how does this thing work and then all of a sudden you're rolling away Yes. You didn't put one down and then jump off. You were just like, no, I put it down. I went to the other side, and then I, I, you know, I how we get off the ramp, we just, you know, kick and knee slide down. And I went to turn around to ask uh, Bod, what did it look like? And he already took off running to the camp to tell he, everybody. To tell everyone. <laughs> and I was like, dude, so I can't sick. even. <laughs> that's so, the, that's the bit of the story we've been missing. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bod was. Well, so and then you the just other. were making it after that. Yeah, well, Lance came immediately back, you know, as you know, and he's like, all right, let's see it. And I was like, all right. So I did a backside air, and then I did one about four, four and a half feet out or whatever, and it just it just clicked. I didn't, I made the first one. And he was just like in disbelief. He went and he started putting on all his pads, and he's like, I'm, he, there's no way you learn it that fast. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he went up there and did a backside air, another backside air. He tried to spin a little bit, and then, just went for it. I couldn't believe it. He went for it and just landed on the coping, <laughs> busted himself up. Oh, that was it for him. I mean, that, that is night. usually how that one goes the first couple of tries. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever, were you there when Lester learned it? I was, I was. I was. So well, Lester he, was the second one to do it. Yeah. As far as I know, after he did it, Delmar, the day after the contest, Lester learned it and then bounced off the coping and never did it again <laughs> in the same day. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that same that day, right? he did a couple of them and then came down like, boom, the bad one. You know, like you yeah. did on the Mega Ramp. And then and people then, ask me, like, who did it after? Lester? Wasn't it you? And, Jeff Phillips. And, and it was, yeah. really? Yep. Yeah. Then really? you, right? Uh, maybe, yeah. Phillips learned it right away. Yeah. And then I, it, took me, it took me months to do it at Delmar. Mm. And I was the worst spin. Well, like the funny thing spin. is, you know, after I came home from Sweden being gone for whatever, three, four weeks or whatever, and uh, I had to go to Florida and skate my little piece of junk ramp, you know, and uh, so I did that for a week. I was like, I can't skate this anymore. I got I to gotta go to Jacksonville. I'm going to go see Donnie Griffin skate that ramp because I was coming out to uh, Del Mar for the contest. I, I want to skate something. Mm. And uh, so he's about three and a half hours away, Kona Skate Park. And they had this like small ramp, you know, old school style, but it had uh, fiberglass on it. So when you skate fiberglass, you know, if, if it gets dewy outside, if it's Sweet human, fuck, which sorry. Florida is always, yeah. But it was good at the time. So we were skating and I didn't, nobody knew anything about the twist or anything. And Donnie, you know, he was a little kid, uh, but he was just he was sponsored by the bone, you know, by Pal Peralta. And uh, I was like, Donnie, uh, I'm going to do this trick. Let me know what you think about it, you know? So I did a backside air and I did it. 
And he just started screaming, what did you do? What is that? What did you do? You know, like it was just so exciting because nobody knew. Yeah. And then um, by the time that next week we flew to California to practice, I was like, you know what? That worked pretty good. Maybe I'm just going to. I'm just gonna do it in my run. Let's why not? You know, don't because it sounds like try to make it anyway. Them, you're you know? pretty consistent. Well, at the time, yeah, it was, it was, it was just I had it dialed. I don't know how. Um, and when I got to the park, I, you know, people talk or whatever. Neil Blender was just the coolest he, thing ever to me. Like, because I don't think there's ever been a trick to mm. this day that has been so what we do, and now you do that, and we're like, whoa, we do. Because yeah. for the last 20 years, we don't do that. You know, yeah, like, yeah. We fucking do now. And it's like, wow, okay. Because it really is a, a, like even layman, like if you don't skate, you're like, what the? F-? Like when I started spinning them, I was a star in Australia for spinning it. Because people mm-hmm. were like, what the fuck? You're like upside down. Yeah. I'm like, yes, McTwist is kind of how they look. <laughs> well, yeah. So funny enough, when I got there to the skate park, Neil Blender was just, he was waiting for me. Somehow he knew through somebody, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it was, there was a buzz. And uh, he's like, come on, I want to see it. I want to see it. I'm like, like, what are you talking about, Neil? What are you talking about? He would not leave me alone. <laughs> he was relentless. I'm like, yeah. all right, let's just go try it. Whatever. I'm not going to make him the contest anyway. I may as well try some. But because it was a pool, uh, you know, it's, it's round. I learned this on a flat ramp. So if you, if you travel a little bit, you can, you, can, you can pump it over. You know what I mean? No. To try to bring it in. I'm just saying, if you try to spin flat in a pool and you're not straight up, you're going to hang up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man, this isn't quite working. So I was actually almost doing it all oop And then I actually flipped over to make it. And that's when it started flipping in Del Mar. Oh, at Del Mar. See, because yeah. that's the first one we saw. We just assumed that's what they were all like. Did you tell and yourself th- you were going to flip or was it because no, you started it was to just, alley-oop uh, and made it was it just flip. determination. But I'm that's like, interesting I because sh- I saw recently one of your first ones mm-hmm. in Sweden and it wasn't flipped. And, yeah. it, and it really was shocking because I yeah. said, that's not how he does it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he did one of the first ones. But yeah, I understand. But at Del Mar, so it's funny because for us as spectators, we we're like, he just does a one and a half somersault. That's how it works. I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's funny how it just fell into that. But it's just, you know, just uh just trying it and 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 willing it around, I guess. You know, what I mean I remember like, you did it during your qualifying run, and I was shocked because yeah. I was like, I told Stacey, I go, Mike, Mike did the trick in his qualifying run. He's like, That's his signature, man. <laughs> <laughs> well you know up until that i don't know if tony knows the story but uh stacy was was tough you know on me i mean these guys were scoring high i was like oh, i was all right you know once in a while i do well i like it upland i did really well mickey alva showed me how to like carve and do rock and roll slides like i was like i, I we didn't have pools you know what i mean yeah and uh i loved it i just i loved it and um most of the guys i skated with had trucks so hard you know so tight they they couldn't even carve like yeah. Alan Gelfin got thrown into <laughs> trying to do inverts and carving corners he just board doesn't carve it's like he had oh, fiberglass wow. bushings on the back truck what? remember that yeah and uh Stacy trying to ride his board at marina <laughs> you know he's wanted to see his signature board and he tried just going down a bank and it didn't turn and broke his arm on the yeah just oh. you never ride anybody else's board by the way Right? Yeah, especially Never if they've got fiberglass out. bushings. What I didn't the know hell? That. Broke his, I remember him telling yeah. me how he broke his wrist. But right in front of us. I, that he had, Bam. but I didn't know that that was how. That's wild. Yeah, but I think he had already injured it before and then just did it again. Well, he he famously, and we digress, but he famously told that story to us a few times. He said, you know, I was skating and, and uh, I broke my wrist and then it healed and then I broke it again or I broke the other one. Yeah. And he's like, that's it. I'm not going to be a pro skater anymore. And that's when he decided to join forces mm. with George Powell. Oh. That's what he. That, that's the story he always says. You know that reminds me too. We Two talk, about, wrists, talk huh? about Fred Blood. You know, doing like five forties in the pool. Stacy Peralta used to do five forties slides. slides in the, the big marina bowls, yeah. and that would always was in my mind too. You know, just the way he did. He did it so fast and just spun around like it was backside amazing. Yeah, yeah, and at Lakewood, Lakewood at the five. top of those yeah. big bowls, they were like yeah. what twelve feet deep. Yeah. Those bowls. Yeah. It's kind of like a little bit of an Ollie 540. I mean, you're on the ground still. <laughs> it's t- as far as I'm concerned, it's harder. Kind of, um, right? Because you, you got to put your hands low and then somehow like catch up to it. Yeah. Yeah, that first 360 seems impossible. Yeah. Wi-Fi's out of the shop, boys. Take cash. 
take cash. <laughs> He's running the shop <laughs> on the <laughs> podcast. Well, you know, I listen. Everybody's like, oh, "How come you're never at your store?" I'm like, "Dude, I, I got a family. I, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying life. How can I be at my store all the time? I'm there. And nothing runs itself, Jason. And Tony knows that. You gotta do your checks and balances. You gotta like give them. You know. Yeah, we're always on call. Yeah. So what about the McEgg? Oh, the McEgg. Uh, How'd that come about? I tried to learn it at Del Mar when you were getting really close. Yeah. And he would not tell me how to do it. Oh, I was jumping. Uh, he's trying to jump me. You know, he's trying to jump me there. I was like, because um, I, I went up and, and did the, the push off thing. Not, the, not like him. Like he, he did a full one arm somersault in. Yeah. Well, and you had like, to, you had to, yeah, it was kind of a weird trick. It's not a trick you can make all the time. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, if you get that thing going and you can just keep coming around. There was a guy named Steve Schneer, remember, did yeah. that like crazy, what was that, the hospital or something? But yeah. I, can't, I couldn't do handstands or none of that right. crap, but I, I love doing eggplants and ham plants and whatever. And I just, I, by accident, I flipped over one day and I was like, man, if I could just, uh, and then we actually, we would take uh, boards at some of the hotels and uh, bring it in the pool and actually yeah. mess around. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I actually yeah. did it. I made I it in, in the in the full pool. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we were skating a contest in uh, Shut Up and Skate in Texas, and you know, like I I don't know I, I don't know if, you know like this guy was always on. He always get himself down before he got up, but at that contest was one of the only contest like I, I you know I was just on, like I, I made every trick. Like I yeah, you were in the zone. I made tricks I never made before. Yeah. I was on the ramp in practice. And I was doing a uh, Elgarial. No, I was doing an Elgarial on the other side, and then traveling. And oh yeah, L Lester Kasai so said, "Mike, why don't you just do that over the channel?" I'm like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, you're you're traveling enough." And in practice, I made it. Yeah, just like that. And I did it in my run, I yeah. think. And I, I just couldn't. Uh, I couldn't come off my board, Jason. And yeah. then, but I remember like coming up the back of the ramp, and all of a sudden I got sick. I don't know what it was, but I was good after that. You threw up. Oh yeah, adrenaline but, or I don't know. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Texas, come on, it's humid. It's whatever you know. Okay. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, did the twist, did everything, and then uh, I was like, I may as well just go for that make egg, and I think that's what put me over the edge a little bit. But I kind of, you know, landed like this, and then just slid around, but I made it. Yeah. Which was yeah, it was a, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, it's. That, no, I was I was after that I was at Del Mar one night and I was trying it and I was like Mike how do you how do you guys like uh, yeah you gotta uh, <laughs> you gotta get would, your own trick dude. he would start nah. to ask me well, but he, he would never really follow through and I was just like he's not gonna tell me no because I didn't know <laughs> Tony I didn't know I did I wasn't actually making it I was just sliding around Florida style land you know it's just, like you know what even if you told me I was still never uh, gonna do it yeah yeah, yeah that one makes that one. little sense yeah. yeah. But, you know, after, you know, not being in the top 10 for a little bit, I was like on the verge of getting cut by the, by Stacy. You, did he say that or you just felt that? No, I, no, he's, he's flat out said, you know, like you, you need to start. Yeah, there, there would be ultimatums. No, it was never mean. It was just more that you're going to have to make the top five in the next, you know, and that was when events or we got to figure out something else. Do you think that helped you with your age. commitment to making a McTwist? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, listen, I didn't really care. I was, I was having the life of my, uh, you know, I was skating for me. I didn't care. Yeah. But, um, I wanted to keep going to California. So I know I had to start placing better if yeah. I'm going to get those trips yeah. and whatever. And then, um, when I made the twist, I was like, I'll just do that in my qualifying. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I was, and I was in top five always, that's you what, know, that's basically. A, I was, I was like number four all the time, all the time. I yeah. could never, ah, once in a while I would, you know, do something, but I was like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Fourth is awesome. Mm. I'd be. Tell us about um, when you got hurt during Gleam the Cube. Oh, you remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I got there right after it happened. Yeah. I, I was set. This was our, yeah. Stacy was the second unit director, if you remember. Yeah. So these guys, they, this they were Police actors Academy? on the- no, no, sorry, Gleam the Cube. Cube. Wait, yeah. Stacy's a part of the movie. He, he was the second unit director. Yeah. Okay. So when we when we tried out for Gleam the Cube, he brought all of us to the tryouts. Okay. And I remember him, I remember him vividly coaching us, like, you guys, 
like be obnoxious, be loud, be memorable, you know, don't hold back because we want them to, to remember who we are and, and maybe get parts. And okay. so we all read for parts and Tommy and I both got a part and then everyone else got stunt double action, including Mike, who was the main. Cause I, my, double my body was fit, uh, Christian, Christian Slater's, you know, yeah. okay. whatever. Yeah. I, I was fine with that. I didn't, I, you know, it was good. But these guys had to wait around a lot, but I got to go everywhere with Stacy, you know, filming along ditches and whatever, you know. And okay. uh, so at this one scene where uh, Christian Slater's supposed to, he's skating, skating, and then all of a sudden he looks over his shoulder and there's this motorcycle, you know, coming after him. He's going to run him over and like pops a wheelie. And then the guy's supposed to like, you know, kick up his skateboard and jump out of the way and the motorcycle comes through. So oh, we had, God. I'm like, Okay, so I did that. You know, I hear the motorcycle coming, kicked up my board. <laughs> guy in a big 750 does a wheelie, the stunt guy. It's a road bike. Yeah, and perfect, you know. Oh, could we do one more, Mike? <laughs> yeah. What? You know, really? So I'm like, Stacy, what am I, you know, like, what did I do wrong? Like, he's like, you didn't do anything wrong, Mike, but just this maybe like, works. maybe like, you know, like make like you're really that guy, you know? I was like, oh, okay, Stacy. <laughs> Going down the sidewalk, same thing. Go to kick up my board. Board goes the other way. So I'm like, the motorcycle's coming through. He's going to he's gonna slam on my board. Yeah. So I go to grab it, oh. and he goes the other way, and I met him. But luckily, he put his, as he's doing a wheelie, he put his, his foot, like strong-armed his foot, yeah. and it it hit me and threw me over the curb. Kicked like you out of the way. 12 feet, yeah. And like saved me because I could have like yeah the like, engine would have got you uh, everything oh yeah I everything. thought you got hit by the tire no wow uh, it was his foot and the peg of the motorcycle oh, that hit my calf wow. you know so uh, I was out in the street I, I was scraped up but I knew something was wrong with my leg I, I like tore something in my calf or something and they're like oh well, let's put you up at the you know the Beverly Hills whatever I'm like no I don't want to get just take me home you know my uh, Athletic trainer, Barry Zaritsky was there. I was like, just bring me to him. I can't drive. Would have just have somebody drive me down. And that's what they did for two weeks. And Barry took care of me. And I think then they had Gator try to double me in the meantime. So you can see like, I'm I'm goofy foot. And all of a sudden you see Gator regular foot. And then you see oh, me yeah. goofy foot. You see Gator regular foot. So we had to reshoot a few things. How hurt um, were you? It was uh, a couple weeks. Not any, like you didn't tear anything. You came, you came back yeah. to the shoot, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So one of the last things he did, and I have a photo of it, and I hope I can find it for this, it was so gnarly. He went, they, they built a ramp that was, what was it? At least like 25 feet high, maybe, right? I don't know. It was up there. To, oh, to look like the wall, right? Yeah. So you know the, the very last scene where he, where Christian Slater goes up and does a wall ride, and then he gets the bad guy, like he, he goes up the, the off ramp of the freeway. Yeah, and he ends up like going up the Jersey barrier and then wall riding up and you see him like hanging on the wall forever. Yeah. So Mike had to go down this, this giant starting ramp and then ride along a bank that was too steep to hang onto for as long as he could. <laughs> How do you remember this? Because I, I have this photo of it and I remember, uh, I remember watching it like that yeah. is so gnarly that they want him to do that. Yeah. But, and so they had the cameras fixated on fixed on the on the bank so that it's vertical okay so it gives the illusion that he's doing a wall ride which he really is because yeah. it's super steep mm. and and then there's just stunt pads all the way through it for him to go as long as he can and then just fall on the stunt pads okay mm. and he did a couple times and it was seriously like i was so thankful not to be a stunt man <laughs> yeah. when i saw him doing that uh, well i was i was a skateboarder and you know uh it was buddy joe hooker was the Yep. Stunt guy? Stunt coordinator. Coordinator, yeah. So at one point, we had to like go on this, uh, I had to hang on to this Corvette, but it was going too fast. So they made a little step, like a skateboard, and he just like strapped me on it, and he's going through traffic on the freeway, you know, yeah. the fake freeway people. But it's sketchy. I'm like, I, I, you know, I'm I'm not a stunt, I'm a skateboarder. Like, yeah. how am I going to do So anyway, he just tied me on. He's like, Mike, just hang on. So we're going through, and the thing is hitting the, the the freeway and sparks are coming out of it, you know. 
And then there's another point if we were still on that movie. And he he was the driver, right? He was and, the driver. He, like, he, he, but in the movie too, he's yeah. the driver of that Corvette. Yep. If you see him, he's like the yeah. stunt coordinator and also had the part. And then remember there was, I don't know if you were there that day, there was a big like window in this yeah. house. And you yeah. had to go off a launch ramp with your pads and stuff. And uh, they had like poppers on the window that breaks into glass, but it's real glass. Mm -hmm. And they have to pop it right before you hit it. But if they pop it too, too late. late, you can break your neck. If they Dude. pop it too soon, or you, you won't look right. And you had one shot. And I was like, cool, I'm going to be a stuntman, whatever. And Stace's like, Mike, uh, let's, let's just, let's let Chad do it. Chad Randall, who's a really great guy. I took yep. him to Lance's skating before. And his dad was a stuntman. And uh, Chad could skate a little bit, but he couldn't skate off the launch ramp. So finally he just... He ran, launched, put it in a, you know. Yeah, I remember him. I remember him. Really? I was there and he was asking us like, is this, am I grabbing this right? We're like, <laughs> grab it however you want, yeah, dude. Just like make it. going through the glass. Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so they have him duct tape and they pop the window just in time. It was perfect, you know? And uh, I'm like, wow, Chad, that was great, man. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, because I saw a few, he had little cuts on his, on his face. And then I saw his hands, they yeah. were bleeding. He was bleeding everywhere. He had to get stitches, uh, little stitches here and there. And I was like, Whew, thanks, Stacy. <laughs> yeah. Are you a stuntman now? Uh, well, occasionally, you know, occasionally. You do a lot of stuff, right? You were Bruce Willis. You've done tons of shit. Yeah, I did. I did a uh, stunt double for Bruce Willis in some movie that comes on at like three in the morning. And I show up like once a week. I think they filmed for like five weeks and I would just show up and by the, like the, and, 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 they respected my time because I would show up at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night. I do my shot and then I go home at like two to drive back to San Diego. And uh, I guess by the third time, Bruce Willis is like, yo, Mike, how you doing? <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> really nice guy. Um, and then uh, on one of the shoots, uh, the director's like, hey, can you show Bruce how to, how to like, you know, pose because they had him on like a Apple box with the oh, you know, train yeah. track thing. And he's like, he's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now yes. he does. Shit. And uh, so I'm like, wow, really? I got to go up to him? You know? So I come up to him and he's like, hey, Mike. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't even let me talk. I'm like, all right, Bruce. Thanks. <laughs> Good talk. Good talk. You didn't. <laughs> he would not listen to anyone. Did you have to skate naked in that movie? All right, dude, you don't have to tell everyone. Um, <laughs> well, at the time, I, listen. How uh, did you know that? Because I, I watched the movie oh, you and, you can, and okay, I know yeah. Mike's style. And I'm yeah. like, that's not the, Bruce Willis. That's not my butt with and the gun. And I wasn't talking about that's your ass. That's not my butt I'm with the gun. No, that's not me. Wait, you had an ass double? I, I, yeah. No, yeah. The real stunt guy, it was him. And we were all laughing at him, you know, just making jokes and whatever. And then it was my turn to, to uh, I had to skate down this street, you know, and uh you go, we practice it. I go down the street. I turn the corner. It's right on Venice. It's in the middle. It's like, uh, it was like, the practice was at like 10 o'clock, you know? Wow. I turn the corner. I go into a bar. There's a few people in the bar. I jump on the bar. I skate off, ollie off into an airbag or whatever. Easy, right? Takes them, what, hour and a half, two hours to light this thing, get it all ready. And I thought I was going to wear the, uh, the shorts, you know, the, the tan shorts. They're like, oh, no, no, no. I go, oh, well, the banana hammock one, you know, right? No, no. So <laughs> you're, you're doing it. I'm doing it. No, no. So it was a patch like this with a piece of uh, fishing line around the back. And they glue it, Jason. Oh. They glue it to your, your stuff underneath. Listen, I was like. Man, I, I, I just rocked the cock. Like, no, I said, I'm out, man. I'm, I'm, I'm out. Oh. I'm like, I, I think I made my SAG insurance. You can get somebody else. Whatever. Like, I, I don't do this. Like, I, I can't, I can't wear that. When it's like, there's nobody there. It's fine. Just, just this one shot. We already practiced it. Please, just do this. And I'm like, <laughs> it wasn't much. It was like 200 bucks extra, Tone. Oh, um, stunt bum. So we I was like, whatever. Bums. Let's just do it. Before. Let's just do it. And uh, okay, we get out there. I'm in behind the parking lot. Uh, I have a towel on me. Yeah. Okay towel off I'm, I'm already embarrassed okay i'm skating down they're filming me filming me I, i'm like oh, just whatever i turn the corner and there's a whole crowd waiting to get into these bars and they're all that's a loud like holy shit. I, go, I go in i open the door there was only six people in there before i open the door there's 200 extras <laughs> <laughs> yeah no one's gonna see it oh yeah it was it was it was yeah it was a very trying time. Bait and switch. Yep. Sounds exciting.
And wow, then, I oh, that up. what's the movie called? I can't tell you. And at remember. what point is that no, scene? I'm telling you. <laughs> what is the hour and minutes of that scene? Yeah, I wish I knew the name. They'll find it if they really want to find it. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going into that one. And then I, I showed up on this. Uh, a good friend of mine said, "Oh, you'd, you'd be good for Mark Wahlberg. You know, uh, we need a stunt double on a little ramp in Louisiana or something." And I found this guy there, stunt doubling Will Ferrell at the same time. So it was awesome. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm here. And uh, I don't know. The, you probably already told that story. The worst ramp yeah. ever built for a TV yeah. or a movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, I think it had paneling on it. Paneling. Yeah. And then they thought, well, we're going to make this nice for Mike and Tony. We're going we're gonna to put uh, that clear stuff. What is it? Uh, you know, uh, shellac or whatever. Yeah, it is. yeah. You know, Thompson's water seal or something on yeah. it. Very humid. <laughs> it was the it, most slippery ramp. It was like seven feet, eight feet, two vert. Yeah. Just deadly. Like, yeah. Deadly. So then it it, uh, it, uh, it it would come off on your wheels. So you'd have to have somebody take sandpaper and clean your wheels every oh time. And then, so Tony comes in and he saw me. Oh, I did some inverts and I did some grinds. He's like, aren't you going to? you gonna do something like like do something i'm like tony i i'm trying to survive here yeah. dude yeah and then, you haven't and then, even skated and then yet i dropped in a reality set oh in. he went down hard dude i did one back set air didn't land straight mm. but landed straight enough yeah you know what i mean it wasn't like i landed sideways yeah and my whole board washed out and shot into the crowd and then they were like mm. what's going on like what's wrong with you guys <laughs> and then what's i had to do a mctwist bail Oh, well, wait, but before that, remember, they're like, oh, well, Tony's here now, and uh, we're going to bring on the vert so he can do the McTwist bail. And Tony's like, Mike, uh, did, did you order this? So you, you want vert? <laughs> we could barely do tricks as it was. Yeah. They were, they were oh, like they made, three they made foot a box, extensions. A box, box extension. And they were bringing them on, and they had already taken off this, like, janky metal strip coping. Yeah. So they're like, oh, we got, if you guys aren't going to use it, we're going to have to put that other, we'll put the coping back on. And they didn't tighten the bolt. And then <laughs> Tony. And then I did the McTwist bail, but mm -hmm. I didn't pull out enough. So I bounced off the coping, oh, yeah. but there was a screw sticking out of the coping. Uh. And then I landed and I was like, oh, I hit the coping. You know, I'm like, it's fine. It's okay. And all of a sudden there's just a pool of blood in my, because I'm wearing pants. Hey. Pool of blood forming in the pants. And I was like, what? What is that? And they cut off the pants because they're freaking out. And I just have this, <laughs> this uh, pressure uh. gash on oh. my thigh because I hit and, and hit the screw. So just boom. Yeah. And I was like, oh, great. I'm going to the hospital. Hey. One and done. Yeah, one, and, one done. and done. Yeah. So that was that. And then. But it was super fun doing it. And I it luckily had all my shots done. Yeah. Because I did the thing where I went off the roof and they, they used a harness. Yeah. Um, but this guy killed that <laughs> ramp in the, like, I, I could not believe he, he was doing selfie GoPro videos, doing inverts and stuff. Like it was. Ah, yeah. Well, the thing is, you left me after that, after we had beignets. They're Don't like, say it like I left you. No, like no, no. I know. No, I know. No, it was my my choice because they're you like bailed on it. Can you? Can you? You went to hospital. <laughs> can you stay one more day? Because we want to like we want to put Mark up on like the wires, you know, to actually drop in. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I get paid, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. So they all left, and I was by by myself. I wasn't in like the actors hotel. I was in the uh, you know cruise hotel, like mm -hmm. you know whatever it is. Same. And so I was sitting there, and I'm just like. Oh, this sucks. I gotta go. I gotta stay here by myself. And I got a call from Mark's f best friend in high school, who helps him run lines. This guy Angel, <laughs> really cool dude, skate fan or whatever. And um, he's like, Miguel, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. He goes, I'm coming to get you. All right. Came and got me. Took me to dinner. We just having a great time. He gets a call during the dinner. Like he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, I have Mark's truck. Why? Well, you know, what well, he goes, you can't leave McGill in the hotel. Like he needs to be taken care of. He stole Mark's truck and took me to dinner. It's crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. Right. Yeah. Respect. It was super fun though. Um, and uh, hey, I'm just thankful to have all those adventures with you, Mike.
All right. Uh, Mike McGill, thank you for coming by and sharing all these stories. So well, I have great. all these other stories. I mean, no, we're, we're, round, we're round two. <laughs> we, gotta do, we, gotta do, we haven't we even got, got to Jason yet. Two. Come on. I'm good. I cover myself a lot. We're good. So we're going to do a little skating, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yes. A little bit. Let's get it. Yeah. I got to so start dropping in again. You guys got to. Guys we're going to hang out with the big boys in. on the top of the ramp with the big boys play. Well, thanks for the invite, boys. Uh, you know, it was a little rough, but I, you know, I made it through. Okay, I would say like and describe, but McTwist and shout. Oh. <laughs>